doing, Meadow? I'm sure not. Yes, I take this. <laughs> Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome in to a brand new edition of Snaps, your favorite college football podcast. We just started this thing a couple months ago, uh, and it has been so much fun. These mm -hmm. last couple months getting to grow this show with y'all. Uh, thank you so much. If you're listening for the first time, what up? Welcome. Uh, if uh, maybe you're joining us another time, welcome back. Okay, I hope you're having a great time. If you're listening on podcasts, rate it, review it, share it with your friends. If you're on the Volume Sports YouTube channel, hit the like button, subscribe. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love doing this. And as as we'll see on today's show, Aaron, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a of, 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 of a gather your breath type of weekend. Now, it's not to say there's no games. In fact, for this show, Snap, there's actually one pretty massive game. But for a lot of schools out there, uh, this is a week of maybe reflection, like I said, catching your breath, and preparing for this final push uh, as we are, you know, kind of close – to the off season, but but we can get there in a little bit. First off, uh, I'm T Bob Abear, one of your hosts. Joining me is SEC legend QB one, Aaron Murray. Aaron, what's up, man? How's it going? Doing good, doing good. Still on baby watch day number. I don't know what it is. Uh, wow. We're getting close though. Big big appointment this morning. Things are looking good. Things are moving. And forty hours, twenty four. We asked Maddox, my son, two days ago. We said Maddox. What day is your sister going to arrive? And he looked at us like dead, dead ass, right in the face. And said Thursday. So I was like, okay. So oh, I wow. mean, it's it's it is two o'clock Eastern. The appointment went well this morning. Um, some things were done to accelerate the process, so it could happen. Fingers crossed at any moment. So we shall see what happens. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I, I do want to reiterate what you said at the beginning of the show. It has been an awesome two, three months getting to to hang out with everyone in the chat, interact. Yeah, to, it's been really, really fun. So uh, continue to share, tell your friends about us, and let's make this thing big AF, especially because guess what? Yes. LSU, Georgia, right here. I mean, come on, two, two of the best teams in the country. Let's go. Uh, yeah, and, and well, you know what? The only thing better than having a baby, Aaron Murray, is having a Turtle Box speaker. That's right. The best Bluetooth speaker on the market. You know what this thing doesn't do? Shit its diapers. Not sleep at night. In fact, since it's a Bluetooth speaker, you can actually control it however you want. And uh, look, real talk, Christmas is right around the corner. Turtleboxaudio.com. Promo code SNAPS. Gets you $20 off. Free shipping and handling. But this thing's incredible. It's fully waterproof. It gets so loud. I still... I use it daily. I still have not had to recharge it. And I think I'm finally about to, but we are talking hours and hours and hours and hours of battery life. It makes a perfect gift, super easy to use, great for anything outdoor, great for around the house. I use it as my computer speakers here at work. Um, also, if you buy two of them things, you can very easily make it as a stereo sound. I love this product. Very happy to be working with them. The T and T Bob stands for Turtle Bob. Okay. Turtleboxaudio.com, promo code SNAPS. $20 off, free shipping and handling. Excellent gift idea. Way better than a baby. Trust me. Not sentient. They it's going to be great. They don't great. shit everywhere. They don't shit everywhere. Exactly. So yes, that, that, that is a big plus. I, I've, I mean, I've never uh, had the turtle box wake me up for six months straight and make mm, sure that me and my wife months. are ready to kill each other. That's in my last baby was six sleep, months. Sleep, sleep training. Sleep training. Come on. We did Mom's that. on call. We, we finally broke down. Yeah. Wait, what's mom's on call? Months. Mom's on call. You have what two weeks? Go get the mom's on call book. Read in your spare time. It's all about like the sleep training and progression, and you know it, it, they, you put the baby on a schedule, and uh, it is a game changer. Trust me. Trust okay. me. For those in the chat that know, tell T Bob go get it. Get an right. audio book. Get the physical book. Whatever you want to do, T Bob. Get the app will save you and your wife a lot of long nights trying to we, figure out what the hell or who the hell is going to go change some poopy diapers. We broke down and paid a sleep doctor and she just basically said, just let that thing cry. 
And then we did. And like two <laughs> nights later, it was fine. And we never had a problem since. Uh, I'm going to say that Aaron is better at sleep training per our poll in the chat. Um, mm. Okay, real quick. Where was going with that thankfulness thing, Aaron? Now, on my show here locally, I approach it from an LSU angle, right? Being like thankful for the year that you just had because a year that exceeded the wildest of expectations. That's always a lot of fun. But really just, you know, as we prepare to enter Thanksgiving, the holiday season, bowl season, the playoffs, um, this is a great moment to kind of take a step back and just think about what a wonderful college football season it has been. And it's kind of wild, right? Because it seems like only yesterday we were starting this show and, you know, we're making videos for like week zero and Nebraska playing in uh, Ireland or wherever it was when they played Northwestern to start the year or getting excited for like uh, the backyard brawl or Penn State Purdue on that week one Thursday. And yet here we sit, Aaron, Celsius last home game, right? Mm. And then it coming like it's it's it, it's almost over. We are almost to the long dark of the off season. Aaron, I know we did not prep for this, but if I had to ask you the thing that you are most thankful for this college football season, what would it be? Uh snaps, one hundred percent. I, I thoroughly yeah. do. I'm, I'm being completely genuine here. Like I thoroughly enjoy my time with you. And the entertainment I get from you day in and day out to you, Bob. It's been a blast hanging out, having some fun. Uh, I think the biggest difference between the snaps and for me this year is, is covering SEC with ESPN, which is great. Like to be able to cover the conference that you and I know really well, to be able to go to a lot of these SEC games, to be able to come home like right afterwards is pretty badass too, especially with a two-year-old. So that, but no, it's been a, it's been a great, great season overall. Like when it comes to competitiveness, when it comes to you know, I've said it a couple of times in the past two weeks, like, you know, Georgia is clearly the number one team in the country, but then, you know, that two through 12, you can make, you mix, mix and match it however you want. And, and you can yeah. make a, an, an easy case that so-and-so should be here and so-and-so should be, you know, here and, and, and so forth and so on. So the parody in college football this year is, is I think taking a step forward and I think it's only going to get better and better and better. And I think this is, you know, also for those that want an extended playoff, that want to get to 12 and not have to wait to 2020, 2026, I think this year was the perfect example of pushing the, the whoever those are in charge of making the decision of, hey man, 2024, we need to make this thing happen and damn it, make it happen next year if we could. Like it, it, yeah, we know. need 12 <laughs> teams in the playoff. And I think this year was the yeah. perfect example of why it needs to happen. So I am thankful that it's not just one, two, three, four teams, but there's there's 12 really good teams that could make a deep run in a playoff situation. Yeah, to be clear, uh, definitely the thing that I'm most thankful for is also snaps. Growing the show has been so much fun. I've loved getting to know Brum and PG and Polly Walnuts and you and your beautiful, dazzlingly white, straight smile every single day, even on days like today where you look so tan and I look so pale and sickly. Uh, I still love doing the show with you and, and i love the audience man it's been getting so much fun getting to know everybody thank you to everyone who's helped grow show and sports show I, I guess maybe when it comes to the game itself um i've just really enjoyed some of these like you said the parody the unexpected rises right not many would have had tennessee at number five before the season mm -hmm. starts or tcu at four lsu six even like a usc at at, at seven you know, there was some yeah. talk, maybe Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams would work, but we didn't actually know if it was going to work. So it's like fascinating that it has. And then Alabama and Clemson are kind of low and out of it. So whatever, man, it's, it's been an awesome year of college football. Give thanks. That's all I want to do. You know, whatever you're doing today, whatever you're doing in life, let's just be a little thankful for everything we have. I'm thankful that we got another great uh, top five games of the week to start to break down. We got our best bets coming out tomorrow. Uh, by the way, we're 500 on the season right now in best bets. I'm 15-18, Aaron's 18-15, so big weekend coming up Saturday. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in to our five biggest games of the week, and we start with your guys, Aaron Murray, as your UGA Bulldogs travel to Lexington to take on Kentucky, and we'll get into it, but... Um, well, how, how, how are you feeling about this? It's going to be a cold one for the dogs. Oof, oof. It is going to be a little bit nippy there in Lexington. Going to be, I think, in the mid to low 30s during the football game. So I, I'm, I'm anticipating a better game than maybe what Vegas is thinking right now. It is funny, though. Like, we always, you know, 
as a coaching staff, and this 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 brings me back to like the beginning of COVID when the the Michael Jordan documentary came out, and and Michael would always yeah. find ways to get himself juiced before a game. Like you know what what did the team do or a player or a coach do to disrespect me to get me pissed <laughs> off so that I'd go out there and score 40, 50 points and just make them my bitch essentially. What what Kirby with with how good Georgia is and how dominant Georgia is and the fact that Kentucky just lost their Vanderbilt, you would kind of think like, oh, Georgia's just going to look past them. They got Kentucky. They got Georgia Tech. They should just focus on LSU. Not so fast. What does Kirby come out with the other day? I think it was either yesterday or today. He, he Something along the lines of Kentucky's offense is very much a pro-style offense, as we all know. And what I told our defenders is that this is going to be a tape that NF scout, NFL scouts are going to watch because they want to see how yes. you handle an NFL offense. Like, how amazing is that? A team that lost to Vanderbilt a week ago, and you're finding a way to get your defense ready to go kick their ass this weekend on the road. I mean, that's just pure mwah, magic from Kirby Smart. So I love that. You're going to get a great defensive performance, I believe, for Georgia. Kentucky's, I mean, that offense, Will Levis. I mean, Will, Will has one more year left of eligibility. He may need to come back. I mean, he is losing money, yeah, it seems it, like, every single week right now. But if he has a big game against Georgia, best defense in the country, maybe his draft stock gets a little bit better. I'm just saying right now, he ain't healthy. He doesn't look healthy. He's not playing healthy. And this offense is the worst right now when it comes to yards per game in the SEC. Flip it over to the other side. I do think you will get a, a, a defensive performance from Kentucky that is inspired especially after the, 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 the way they lost to Vanderbilt last week. So I do anticipate those guys at home to show up and play tough. We've seen Georgia you know, kind of have some moments on the offensive side of the football where they kind of lag at times. And again, the weather is going to be a little bit of a factor with just how cold it's going to be. I think there's going to be a low-scoring football game. This is going to be a game that Georgia really flexes his muscles on the defensive side of the football. And I think a really good game for Georgia to, to continue to work on establishing the running game and getting that that identity going heading into to, to essentially the postseason. So dogs win, uh, I would say, in, in somewhat ugly fashion, low-scoring, cold football game here in the SEC. Ah, uh, man, I look, I mm. – so the only thing about Will Levis that's kind of interesting to me, again, is is he hurting his draft stock? Like, he is playing terribly, but is the NFL so obsessed with his body and his kind of prototypical size and athleticism that – you know, somebody out there is going to be like, we can fix him. Like, I don't care what he did. Yeah. Like, we can get it right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure on that. Um, again, in a post-Josh Allen age, that is something that you always have to be aware of. Uh, but like you said, if he doesn't want to play another year and he wants to make some scout fall in love with him and make some front office want to take that chance on him, playing well on Saturday go a very long way to do that, all right? And the same way that, like, uh, if, if we look at one of the games that we're going to talk about a bit later, UCLA-USC, I'm not going to ding UCLA for losing to Arizona last week when I evaluate this game because I think it was a classic look-ahead spot. And I think UCLA yep. was probably more focused on SC than they were the task at hand in Arizona. I think it's the exact same thing with Kentucky and Vanderbilt. So, like, be wary if you're thinking, like, oh, man, you know, they, they lost to Vanderbilt. They're horrible. They're going to get blown out. Uh, well, I mean, well, I guess say be wary. I think they're going to get blown out. Like, at the end of the day, I do think Georgia I, is 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 going to handle business here. But, 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 if there was ever a game where maybe this Kentucky team could lock in and play over their head, they have more motivation in this game than any other. I, I just don't know, like, how much does motivation actually account for when you're talking about going against the dogs? And I mean the literal dogs, like the the dogs of Georgia, which the are just full of NFL talent on the bottom. No, no, I meant like dogs like the OG. Not not like, like you the, weirdos. Like, that like the go dogs. dogs. Like I get the bark at you. Yeah, the dogs. Yeah. Just, yeah, the, the big don't difference though, T, between you making that comparison of UCLA looking ahead to USC this weekend and to Kentucky looking ahead to possibly Georgia versus Vanderbilt last weekend is the fact that at least UCLA has looked good this season. So, like, yeah. they've looked good. They are, you know, number 12. I, I still thought they should have been number 10 team last, last week. But they were a top 12 team. So, yeah, like, okay, they played great. They looked ahead. Boom, they lost. It's not like Kentucky's been a good football team. I think their identity has been shown this entire yeah. year. It's just not been one of Mark Stoops' best seasons by far, especially with what he's put on the field for the past few years. So, I think they are who they are. 
Like, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know if it was a look ahead game. I just think it just shows you that they're just not having a good football season. Mike Wright, the quarterback for Vanderbilt, yeah, is is an electric runner, and he found a way to win the football game. Plain and simple, they're just not. They're not. Um, they're not the Kentucky once again that, that we saw last year. And it brings up another interesting point of like, did Mark Stoops stay at Kentucky too long? Because the, people say, "Oh, it's a comfy job," and I know you love the comfy jobs where you're not scared of getting fired. But he, he kind of set a standard of like eight wins, nine wins, maybe flirt with 10 wins. And that's great. And people are like, oh, that's easy to do. You don't have to win 11, 12. You don't have to compete for SEC championship games. But now all of a sudden, if you don't get to eight wins and you are a six-win yeah. team and yeah. you look at the rest of the SEC East and they're getting better, if you do drop mm-hmm. back a step, now all of a sudden are you not the beloved coach that you were two years ago? And did you miss out on an opportunity to possibly take a better job. This is why like with Lane Kiffin that I always say like, man, when you have an opportunity to go somewhere that can win and can take the next step and you've kind of maxed out at your school, take the jump because people are happy with you now, but all it takes is two years where you're not hitting nine, 10 wins. And they're kind of like, okay, well, we're those, you know, those nine and 10 win seasons. Same things kind of happening at Kentucky right now, starting this season, I think going forward, honestly. Yeah, look, that's why I had Kentucky as my saddest fan base in the SEC. Mm. Uh, Their big year has blown up in their face. The low moment of losing to Vandy, watching Tennessee's rise. It's just like this Mark Stoops train lost all the steam instantly. All it took was one year. After nine years of building it up, took one year to ruin everything. Uh, But you know what? On the positive side, look at Andy J with the $20 Super Chat. My wife is going to kill me, but that speech by Aaron hit me. Love the chat and the show. Happy Thanksgiving, Snaps community. Go Big Orange. Hell yeah. Go Big Orange. VFL, TFL. You know, you know, Rocky Bob's got you, bro. Uh, interestingly, if there was a no division, no pod system, which chat was talking about because Greg Sankey's kind of maybe intimated that's where the SEC is leaning, just one giant division, we'd have what? Georgia, Oklahoma? Or excuse me. Sorry, Georgia. Georgia, Tennessee? Like rematch in the SEC Not championship? Not guaranteed because Tennessee could still lose another game. But but, right. but I, well, can we say like yeah. most likely? Most likely, I'm saying yes. like today. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that, that's a subject for another day. Next on the top five games of the week, Bedlam is back. Oklahoma State versus Oklahoma, and allow me to go on a bit of a tirade here, Aaron, uh, because once again, the most overrated rivalry in college football. Take center stage. Um, I, you know, I think at one of our early snaps episodes, I kind of lamented that Bedlam was going away. I completely take mm-hmm. that back. Uh, this game is a blight on all games that call themselves rivalries. In fact, let's look at maybe the greatest rivalry in all of college football. I'm talking about Wisconsin, Minnesota. It's been played, Aaron Murray, 131 times, out of which is the most in all of FBS. Out of those 131, they've tied eight times. Minnesota has won 61 games, and Wisconsin has won 62. How about that? They got that game. The winner gets Paul Bunyan's ax. So it's the most played game in SBS. You're nearly 100% even. And you get the mythological weapon as a prize. Like, that's a rivalry. Sign me the hell up. Bedlam, on the other hand, has been played 116 times. Respectable number. A lot of history. Oklahoma has won 90 of the games. 90 to 19, 9 0 to 19. Oklahoma State has only won consecutive games once in this entire 100 plus year history in 1932 and 33. They managed to win it back to back times. Now, interestingly, right? They, they have a chance to do that this year. They did win last year. But like, even the Mike Gundy years at Oklahoma State, Aaron, which have been fantastic, he's 3 and 14 in this game. Like, no wonder he doesn't want to play this game anymore. No wonder Oklahoma State doesn't want to play this game anymore. It's not a rivalry. It's it's Mm-mm. it's a yearly beatdown. But if I'm a Cowboy, you know, I would love, as this thing is going out, out, out the window here and Oklahoma's at their lowest point, I would love to steal another one off of them this Saturday. No, they would, and, and they can. I mean, we, we, we obviously know how bad Oklahoma's been this year. They Listen, 23 straight seasons of making a bowl for the Sooners – and that could come to an end if they don't win one of their next two football games. So you want to talk about a sense of urgency in that locker room 
and and from the coaching staff to the players like you don't i remember my my freshman year we were five and six so we were you know one game away from not making it to a bowl game we're playing georgia tech which was our rival and it, it was like it was the talk of the week like man you we do not want to be the football team and, and coach rick's you know tenure there at georgia to be the first to not make a bowl game like how embarrassing is that you know coach rick yeah. one of the goats one of the best to be the one team that doesn't make it to a bowl. So we ended up playing our asses off. We beat Georgia Tech. We ended up going to, I think, the Liberty Bowl. We lost that one. Who cares? We still made the bowl game. So, I, you know, I've talked to a couple of Oklahoma players this weekend, man. That That is a huge talking point right now. Rivalry game, great. But if you can kill two birds with one stone, beat your rival in state, um, kind of, you know, continue to have that, hey, we're the big brother mentality, and then also clinch a bowl game and not have to worry about, hey, really stressing out Thanksgiving week about making a bowl game by winning that 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 season finale I think that's that's obviously pivotal for them so can they do it for how bad they've been this year yeah they can do it Oklahoma State I've, if I've said it once I've said it a hundred times on the show this year not very good in the secondary Marvin Mims has been on a tear lately three of the last four games over 98 yards Dylan Gabriel uh still can can sling it the lefty so can they score against this Oklahoma State defense? Yes. Can they stop them? I think so. A big, big concern is obviously going to be Spencer Sanders' health. He's been out. He came in last week towards the end, led them down to score the game-winning touchdown. But how healthy is he? He's a good quarterback. He's a good college quarterback, not a great quarterback. And when he's banged up, especially when it's an upper body injury, really, really takes a massive nose dive. So I like Oklahoma in this game. At home, urgency to, to get the W. Their offense and what they do and how well Marv, Marvin Mims is playing, their running game. And then obviously Spencer Sanders, like I alluded to, being banged up still gives me some pretty good feelings Oklahoma is going to become bowl eligible after this weekend. I mean, it is a bit interesting though, right? Because... Like, I think my natural instincts as well are to go with Oklahoma. And I don't know if I'm falling in a trap here because, like, when you actually look at the record, like, Oklahoma's two and five in the Big 12 this year. They are second to last. I mean, Iowa, they, they are tied with West Virginia two and five. Iowa State is one and six. And then you look at Oklahoma State and they're seven and three overall, four and three in conference. But the problem with Oklahoma State is uh, I, I just don't know what to make of them since. They lost those three of four where they, they let TCU come back. Then they get dominated by Kansas State, dominated by Kansas. Um, where Where is this game being played? This is at OU? It's in Oklahoma. Mm. Yep, it's in Oklahoma. Yeah, okay, so that's going to be the difference to me. Uh, if this <laughs> game had been Oklahoma State, I think it would have ridden with the Cowboys. At the end of the day, I'll, I'll go with Oklahoma to get bowl eligible again. But if they don't, if Oklahoma doesn't win this game and they go to two and six at conference, not going to get bowl eligible. Like, uh, well, they have to go to that, Texas Tech next week, which is we all know how tough it is to play at Texas Tech. So that's I don't I, know I, that if any, I'm a player, I'm not trying to put my money on beating Texas Tech on the road to become bowl eligible next week with how bad they're no, doing. No, no, year. no, no, no. No, certainly not. So just mm -hmm. the nightmarish year for Brent Venables looks like it could potentially roll right along. And I mean, come on, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, like I don't care. You know what sucks? You probably got your hopes up that you were going to be in the Big 12 championship at a certain point. Like maybe you were even going to be a potential playoff team. Like that's how this thing was trending early on. And I understand that that upset you that you're not there, but you know what's going to make it all feel better? If you go and break Oklahoma. Like, if, if, if you can go hand Oklahoma one of those losses at home that makes everybody turn on one another, where all the local radio shows are calling for Brent Venable's heads, players are transferring, all the bad news are coming out, maybe they'll do a little Brian Harson thing and do a little digging, trying to get some dirt on Venables for cause. Like, if you're Oklahoma State, you have the ability to try to force them into that desperation. It's just a matter of can you follow through. We will see. Um, all right, anything else on Bedlam? No, a lot of people in the chat that are not happy with 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 T. Bob taking Oklahoma in this game. I get it though. Like, listen, you know, I talked to Roy Williams, and Roy was one of our guests about a month or two ago on the show. And I was talking with him the other day about you know what the hell is going on with your Sooners, man? Like, it, it, it can't be a, a talent thing. Like, they got talent on the roster, and he said the, the the guys just are trying to do too much. Like, they're 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 especially on the defense side of the football. And and obviously, I'll. I'll 
you know, let him speak on well, that more than Venable's me because he knows fault. it. Like, what the hell? Well, I know, but like, it's it's between coaches and it's players too. Like, the players, according to him, are 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 not playing complimentary football in the sense of like, hey, I got my job, you got your job, and instead these guys are trying to do everything. They're trying to make every single play. They're not playing gap sound defense. And then when you make a mistake, then it kind of screws your buddy behind you. It's a chain reaction. And right now, you know, his message to me, and he's like, man, if I'm in that locker room. I'm just telling the guys, do your job. Stop trying to be Superman and just play in your gap, play discipline, and 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 trust in what the coaches are telling you. So, like I said, he watches a lot more Oklahoma than I do. Obviously, he knows and has talked to the coaching staff more than I have. That was his message to me, and and to me, that that's easily correctable. Just be disciplined, and this team has the talent to win these next two games. We'll see if they can take care of business. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's on the coach. And look, if you're surprised that it chose Oklahoma, yeah. I mean, just know Vegas has Oklahoma by seven and a half in this game. So, like, I I, I, I feel you. I don't like this. I'm not playing this game for what it's worth. Yeah. I don't like either of these teams. They're both way too inconsistent, and I hate Bedlam. So, get the hell out of here. Poo on this game. Uh, number three on the list. Now we're getting a little bit exciting. A game that potentially should have meant more, but does still mean quite a bit. And we are talking about Utah at Oregon, a Pac-12 battle here. Um, Aaron, I get a little confused by the Pac-12 math right now uh, because, like, what could happen is still kind of insane. And and, and mm-hmm. honestly, if you're an SEC fan, it's great to look at the Pac-12 right now because that's going to be your future potentially, right? No divisions, top two teams go, and it creates some real excitement down the stretch. So I haven't been able to fully process all the permutations, but – there is a good chance that whoever wins this game will go to the Pac-12 championship and maybe to take on a USC, though if USC loses, that's when everything gets really wonky. Uh, So still a very important game. Uh, Utah enters in great form. Um, Oregon, I mean, I feel like they're still in really good form. Like certainly last week was very disappointing, but that is a good Washington team, and Penix is a beast. How do you see this one playing out? Well, it's 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 what is Bo Nix? How healthy is Bo Nix? I mean, that that's the key. I mean, Bo Nix was having a Heisman type yeah, season, sure. and and still is going to be in consideration for it. Like, if they win this football game and end up winning the Pac-12, you know, are they going to go to the playoffs? No, they kind of lost that opportunity. But he could still find his way into New York. I mean, that is a a a, a difference maker. Obviously, if you're in that conversation, they need him out there if they're going to want to compete and win this football game. So that that's going to be the first thing. Um, for those that are betting on this football game, I do have a funny little story, little side story. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna shit on oh. T Bob real quick. Set my line into T Bob at Utah plus three the other day. Oh my god! Got a text this morning. First thing I do when I look over this morning, I get a text from T Bob. Hey, lines dropped to Utah minus one. So not gonna be betting on this game wow. anymore. Thanks, wow. T-Bob. Yeah, Thanks, guys, T-Bob. what you're seeing here. <sighs> Classic QB1 wow. bullshit. Once it wow. wants a lineman to take care of everything for him, doesn't want to do any of the heavy lifting. I, I literally I mean, say I'm I out here. Gamble. I'm out here at 4:45 in the morning placing your bets while I'm trying to take my peaceful I said morning bath. Two time, days ago, okay, two okay? days ago. So you should be thankful. You should be on your knees thanking me, and you can stay on your knees because you're about to pay me 50 more bucks after this week. And we'll get there, though. Yeah, we'll get okay. there. Okay. Uh, we will get there. Uh, but, okay, but, uh, but, but so, wait, wait, so wait, that's a wild with, shift, though. That's a wild yeah, shift. Wild shift. I think has to do with with people betting on is Bo Nix playing or not playing. I think that that's 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 the reason for moving it. I mean, let's let's remember, yeah. or, Oregon had a 23-game home game winning streak heading into last weekend. So you're telling Damn. me after all that success at home that they're about to lose two straight games at home? I, I I don't buy that. I think if Bo Nix is healthy, Oregon finds a way to win this football game. And let's go back to their two losses this year for Oregon. Who were they against? Georgia and against Washington. What killed them in both those games? Stetson Bennett and Georgia's offense threw for 439 yards. Last week, Washington threw for 408 mm. yards. Utah's a great football team. I love Cam Rising. I love how competitive he is. But that's not their offense. Their offense is not the run up and down the field, throwing the ball left and right. They, they, they play complimentary football on both sides. They, they control the, the game. They run the football well. You know, Plus for them is Dalton Kincaid, their talented tight end, who has 50 catches, seven touchdowns. 
looks to be healthy enough to play in this weekend's game. That's a big plus for that offense and their ability to throw the football. But once again, like that is not their MO. So to me, that should give Oregon a little bit more confidence that they can slow down Utah's attack. At the end of the day, like I'm not going to bet on this game because I don't know if Bo's healthy. If both healthy, I think they win. If he's not, obviously Utah, Utah takes care of business. Like that is that is how much this game relies on on their Heisman Trophy quarterback or Heisman Trophy candidate, excuse me, quarterback. Now you know this coach better than I do. Talking about Dan Landing, given that he came over uh, from UJ. By the way, I did see an inkling of a Dan Landing to Auburn rumor, which would be very funny if uh, if he if he went to Auburn and Bo Nix came with him. Um, I, I know Bo Nix is done, but but whatever. Uh, so I, I okay. W- when when I look at this, I see two teams that feel like you said very evenly matched. First um, off, Bo Nix is not done. Oh, he's not done. He does yeah, have another he, year. He is a COVID year if he wants it. I believe. I mean that. He's yeah, I was about to say that's year. on me. I was about to he say that's could. on me. Like honestly, with any college football player in the country, just assume they have another year. Because yeah. nowadays they always have another year. So I, I apologize. That's on me. Um, when I look at this game, I see two big advantages. On one hand, you nailed it, Eugene, right? I mean, I wasn't even aware of that winning streak. But I've been in that stadium. It's a great environment. They're going to be out for blood. They're going to be wanting to come back after last week. Um, night game, Eugene is going to be shining. On the other hand, something I just saw firsthand here locally with Brian Kelly in that run-up to the Alabama game is – how much of an impact coaching can have. And I'm not saying that Dan Lanning has done a bad job, but Dan Lanning does not have the head coaching resume of Kyle Whittingham. He's played in plenty of these big games. He has found ways to win plenty of these big games. He's won Pac-12 championships. Um, he's been a two-time Pac-12 coach of the year. Uh, do you think that Kyle Whittingham represents an advantage over Dan Lanning in this? Yeah, I mean, any type of experience is, is critical in these big-time games, but I've been really impressed with Dan Lanning this entire season. You know, being able to rebound from from what happened against Georgia that first game to, to the run that they've had this season, maybe slight, slight advantage. So if you want to do a slight advantage for home field, slight advantage for, you know, the, the, the coaching experience and, and kind of let's make it equal from here on out and let's just play on the field, this is going to be a great football game. This is going to be a competitive game. This is going to be a game very similar to, you know, the Utah versus USC game that came down to the very end. The the game last week that that the Washington versus Oregon game, and and I will say this, and I think this is a bigger thing. And and you talked about you know people watching the Pac-12. This is a great league this season, and it sucks because this league is about to be just torn to shreds here in the future. And I don't know if there's going to be a Pac-12 yeah. in the next two years. If I had was a betting man, I would probably say no because I, I just like who do you look to if you're the Pac-12 you're losing teams you're getting gutted you're losing two of your best teams most likely that's not going to be the end I can see Washington and Oregon maybe leaving as well and going to the Big Ten if I was them I would where do you go so like I mean they're they're, they're, they're putting on like essentially their, their, their last hurrah right now and it's been entertaining um it's kind of sad like I, I've, I've really enjoyed watching it especially because we stay up late to do our show enjoyed watching some yep. really good action in the Pac-12 out there on the West Coast. But um, I, like I said, I think this game is it's, 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 it's simple. If Bo Nix is healthy enough to play, I think Oregon rolls. If he's not, I think Utah wins the football game. So uh, maybe if you want to wait to bet this game, maybe wait till um, – Right before kickoff season. Yeah, I'm not touching this game until I know what Bo yeah. Nix is doing. Like, yeah. I, you can, and, and remember, with the FanDuel Sportsbook app, Aaron, uh, you can live bet these things, right? Yeah. So you can quite literally wait until you see Bo Nix on the field if you want to hop in and bet these things. If you sign up for the app, remember, use the promo code SNAPS. You want to help out the boys. t um, does it do anything for I, you? Does it do anything for you? I, I, I think you've said it a couple times that you really don't care, but just want to reiterate it. Yeah. Last season, Utah beat them twice. Utah won thirty-eight to seven, yes. and then they beat them thirty-eight to ten. I mean, pretty bad. Yeah, no, that up. that 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 does do something for me. And I get that years exist independently of one another, but I'm just feeling Utah here, man. I really am. Like since that UCLA loss, they've been excellent, right? They beat yeah. USC. Uh, they, they tough battle against Washington state, but Washington state and Pullman, that's a weird place to play. Washington state's got some mm-hmm. juice to him, right? They dominate Arizona. They dominate Stanford. Like, I think this is a Utah that feels destined 
to be back in the Pac-12 championship. And I feel that they're kind of destined to rematch with USC and that very exciting 43 to 42 epic that we were treated to. I think I think it's gonna happen again. Uh so I, I like Utah. I think I think Oregon is gonna still be hurting from letting their playoff chances slip away once again, whereas Utah already made peace with that kind of a long time ago, and they're just out here trying to win the Pac-12. Give me the Utes, and Kyle Whittingham. Um, all right, number two on this week's list, a little TCU at Baylor. And a uh, nice Big 12 battle, another conference that has just been a ton of fun this year when you're talking about the Big 12. And my, my issue here, with this game, Aaron, is that, and I hate when people do this, um, when people keep fading a team again, again, and again, and they're wrong again, 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 but at that point, they're so pot committed that they just keep doing it, and then the second that team finally falters, like, I told you so. I told you they weren't any good, and that's how I feel like people are treating TCU this year. Like, if I sit here and tell you that every team is not going to go undefeated, well, guess what? I'm going to be right. 99% of the time. Like, the math is just on your side. So I'm taking the bold stance, okay? I'm putting myself out there, and I'm saying, no, I think they will get it done. And I think they will go to Waco. And I will drink that Kool-Aid. And I will take Mad Max Duggan to beat up on Dave Aranda, Blake Shapin, and this Baylor Bayer team that just got spanked by Kansas Mm -hmm. State last week. I saw, I, I really came to appreciate the mental team toughness that I saw out of TCU last week, finding a way to win on the road in Austin night game when the offense sucked. Give me Mad Max. I dude, I don't even think it's close. I think TCU wins by double digits this weekend. Woo wee. I I will say this, like you, you talk about, you have to take each season, you know, season by season. You have to take each week, week by week. Like Baylor had the worst offense performance of the season last week, only scored three points. And then TCU had the best defense performance of the season last week versus Texas. That was one game out of nine for each team that they played to the extreme. So I'm not going to expect that you know TCU's defense looks the way they did versus Texas. I'm not expecting Baylor's offense to be as piss poor as they were last weekend either. I think they play better on offense. And I think TCU takes, you know, is back to more normal, okay to bad defense this week as well, especially on the road versus Baylor. I'm with you, though. I mean, I, listen, I, I I will eat my own words. I said two weeks ago that TCU was going to lose one of these games, whether it was to Texas on the road or to Baylor on the road. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm done fading them. I'm done doubting them. Like, I'm with you. I'm, I'm jumping on the ship. This is a good football team. This is this is a team that should win this football game. Uh, there's a team that, that possibly could win this game by double digits. I don't think they do. I think they cover the two and a half, three point spread that Vegas has it at right now. I think they win this game by about seven points, um, not not the double digit points that you think. Because I do like Baylor. I think there is a sense of at home pride, shaping good offense, Dave Aranda, um, that they're gonna they're, they're gonna find a way to compete in this football game. But TCU, yeah, TCU gets it done, uh, and then you know gets ready for a Big Twelve championship in which they lose to Kansas State. Oh, uh, wow. I mean, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to lie. Kansas State does look pretty intimidating right now. Yeah. Like, like they're not just beating teams. They are they are beating teams mm. pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, that said, they ain't got no Mad Max Duggan, baby. Okay, Deuce Vaughn. What is Deuce Vaughn? I hope LSU gets to see Kansas State in the Sugar Bowl so the Tigers can whoop up on that ass as payback for last year when they beat Damn, you already, you're already, you're already, you're already, you're already, you're already. You're already taking out your LSU team from making the playoffs. Wow. Wow. Um, Confidence, T-Bob. Confidence. Look, 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 look. Let's be clear. I will be at the peak of my shit-talking game, SEC Championship Week. But I can separate objective thought from subject. It's how I actually approach the Alabama game, right? Like, I was like, you know, I get it. They're 14-point dogs. You're probably not going to win this game, but what am I going to do? I'm going to just freaking talk shit and believe all week like you're going to. So I'm going to do that exact same thing. But no, I mean, come on, dude. Georgia looks like the best team in the country. They look much better than LSU. Uh, then again, Brian Kelly's a much better coach than Kirby Smart. So, you know, um, I that that's going to be a massive advantage for the Tigers. We'll see. 
Um, uh, Dark James says, I hope Georgia meets USC in the playoff just to beat Lincoln Riley again. And then Light Dog 68 says the dogs would beat USC like a rented mule. Is that true? Mm. Aaron, do you beat your rented mules? I don't. I actually treat them quite kindly. Uh, I, I appreciate the work that they do for me. I feed my rented mules sugar yeah. cubes and carrots. Well, you don't, you don't want to send it back and then get dinged for a, yeah. a damaged goods. You know, It's like kind of how you treat your lease in your car. You treat it very nicely so you don't get dinged when you bring it back. You massage yeah, there's it, you only pet it, you clean it. <laughs> You, you massage it, you pet it, you clean it. Yeah, that's right. It sounds like the only other thing in my life that I beat, which is the spread every single day on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So check it out. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, promo code SNAPS. The number one game of the week, USC at UCLA. Ooh. Well, well, well. Baron Murray. And yes, I said Baron. Because once early on in snaps, as we reflect and give thanks, um, me and Aaron started to do a show together, finding chemistry. One of the things we really bonded on were being La Petite Trojan Boys. You know, Papa Colin loved it. We were kind of ahead of the curve, declaring it that it was going to work. Um, we backed them early. They gave us wins. We watched the film. We were, we were always like, turn on the film, turn on the film. Caleb Williams is great. The offensive line is great. And then somewhere along the line, Baron bailed. A2, Baron, and he left for the Rose Bowl. I, look, I certainly, um, chat, I, I think Rick Neuheisel had something to do with it. Like, you can never underestimate the influence of Neuheisel, when it, and especially Aaron loves Rick. And so I don't know if they were talking late one night, maybe Neuheisel sang him like some beautiful Spanish guitar that talked all about the power of UCLA. But at some point, he bailed. On the Trojans. I have not. Okay. I have stood firm because loyalty comes first with this guy right here. And so I am Le Petit Trojan boy. I believe in this USC offensive line. I believe in Caleb Williams. I don't care if they don't have Travis die. USC is going to go into the Rose Bowl where there will be just as many, if not more USC fans than mm -hmm. UCLA fans. It's not really a home game for the Bruins. They're going to go into the Rose Bowl and they're going to send them packing and they're going to announce themselves to the world that no, 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 no. USC is back. Lincoln Riley is here to stay and Caleb Williams deserves a Heisman. All going down this Saturday night and you're going to owe me instead of 50 bucks, a hundred bucks after I win our second personal snap side bet, uh, second week in a row. Yeah, and and I'm and unfortunately for those watching, I'm not getting the two and a half points that that Fanduel believes I should have. But T. Bob obviously is better than Fanduel, so he believes I should no, just no, you know, straight no. up bet. Okay, tell I mean, the truth, Aaron. Un, un, no, un tell the truth, Aaron. Tell the truth, Aaron. What? Last week, Texas was favored by seven, and you only gave me four with TCU. So same thing. Instead of a three point gap, though, it's only a two and a half point gap. So you're actually half point ahead. Shut the fuck I up. Do some ahead. math. All right. All right. Fine. I still believe UCLA is going to win the football game. And I will go back and defend myself. I bailed on the the, the uh, Petit Trojan boys week of Utah. And look what happened. They lost the damn game. So uh, I will continue to ride with my Bruins. Listen, keys to the game. Don't don't turn the damn ball over. I mean, that that's, that's you know, the yes. one thing that UC, USC does well this season, they protect the football. And then they get turnovers for how e the defense is. At least they get turnovers plus 17, plus 17 and turnover margin. That is phenomenal. That is, that is how you win football games. And that's why they have the record they have right now. You take care of the football, you get turnovers. You're going to win a bunch of football games. They're doing it the big way. The one thing that should concern Trojan fans is their rush defense. You said at the beginning of the season, T-Bob, they're, they're they're Sherman soft up front. They they they're, they're not so physical. Small. They're so small. So like small. That. They're not physical, and that is not good when you're facing the number one rushing offense in the Pac-12. My my Cabernet has just been, uh, just been just <laughs> mm, just been for many. I don't even think so. If you don't beautiful. listen to snaps, if you don't listen to snaps, there is no way you know who Cabernet is. Uh, what Aaron is trying to say is Zach Charbonnet. Charbonnet. And, I, yes, and he yes. cannot, he can't, he couldn't at the beginning of the season Charbonnet. wrap his head Charbonnet. around it. And, and Charbonnet, so now he just calls I like him to call Cabernet. him Cabernet, but he has matured. 
And this is the moment of the season where you get a couple glasses of wine, you pop open your Cabernet that has been maturing for the entire season, and you enjoy <laughs> you enjoy it. This is the moment against the worst rushing defense in the Pac-12. This is when you go off. Him, DTR, let's ride, let's go big, let's dominate, let's run the football, eat up the clock, keep Kayla Williams off the field without die. I think the defense will be just fine. This is going to be a high-scoring game. It's going to be a great football game. Uh, it's going to be a game that it's all it is. It's going to be turnovers. Can you take care of the football for UCLA? If they do, I have confidence in the offense. They will get the job done. Go Bruins. F the petite Trojan boys. The petite Trojan boys. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. And, and, and look, all of our so, – so really it's impossible for us to analyze this game because we just both have way too much skin in the game. Um, but from a pure analysis standpoint, the game is fascinating, right? Yes. I, I mean, they're you know the, the the quarterbacks are two and three in QB rating in the Pac-12. Uh, the defenses are uh, number four and five in the Pac-12 in terms of points allowed. Uh, the offenses are number one and three. Like they seem so evenly matched on mm -hmm. the field and um ultimately it's I, I think you know it's who's can get more stops when you're talking about these two elite offenses but but i agree with you it just comes down to whether or not ucla can avoid turning well, over. explosive plays that, that, for ucla it, it, it avoid giving up the explosive plays i go back to georgia mm -hmm. and tennessee how did georgia slow down tennessee and obviously georgia's defense is, is you know far superior than ucla's but they limited the explosive plays they made them drive the length of the field Without your running game, without your running back back there and, and Travis Dye, can you force USC to be patient and run the football and not get the explosive plays, which they are tremendous at down the football field? That is key number one for UCLA in that defense. Make them freaking earn it. But I will say this like, I love Caleb Williams. You know, if I had a Heisman pick today, he would be my number one, followed by Drake May at North Carolina. I think he's a stud. These are the games in which he transferred from Oklahoma to USC to become the Hollywood star. You want your Hollywood yeah. moment? Yes. yes. You go Very and you, you own this, you own California, you, you own LA, and then you go beat Notre Dame and you go win a Pac-12 championship. Not only will you win the Heisman most likely, but you'll win the hearts of, of a lot of people there. And, and let's not forget, man, he's a sophomore. We asked about his Bo Nix oh. back next year. Whew, Caleb Williams, man, you're about to be a legend in, uh, in, in UCLA lore. If, uh, if you find a way to ball it these next three weeks. Uh, yeah. And you know what else you get Aaron nowadays? Millions of dollars. <laughs> like, like that's the best part is that now mm -hmm. you like, I, it, it's so funny here. Uh, like Jaden Daniels just got a massive NIL deal locally after beating Alabama, Harold Perkins just got his NIL deals up significantly after his performance last week. Like, Yes, if Caleb Williams does it in L.A., he will get millions of dollars. He will generate millions of dollars in booster support for the Trojans. Like, this is kind of an interesting tipping point where the amount of momentum that that team could create program-wide could launch USC mm -hmm. back to the forefront of college football. Or it could go the other way, right? You could lose. Everybody throws up their hands, same old SC, and it'll be a bit more of a grind or maybe uh, slow down the process a bit to get back to where you want to be. Real quick, because I know, I know, I know UCLA's rushing offense is often awesome and USC's rushing defense is the best, but the same is true when you flip it, right? Like USC's pass offense is awesome and UCLA's pass defense is not the best. Yeah. It's towards the lower half of the conference. So it's strength or weakness, strength or weakness, just in two different facets of the game. Who's going to win? You know, I think SC will win. Aaron thinks UCLA will win. Cannot wait, Aaron, for you to be Venmoing me that hundred bucks after uh, after the. Uh, I already Venmoed you to you last week, so you be Venmoing me back. 50 oh, you did. But, oh, you already yes. did. Oh, yeah. damn. Okay, cool. For uh, right on. See, this man pays his debts. One of the reasons why I love Aaron Murray. Well, um, that'll do it. For today's show, uh, Aaron, uh, good luck with the baby. Maybe Maddox is right. Maybe coming here in a couple of hours. We'll see. Um, we already have a best bets in the can that you can be on the lookout for tomorrow. Remember, the boys are 500 on the year, going over 500 coming up this weekend. Huge thank you to FanDuel, promo code SNAPS if you sign up. Thank you to TurtleBox, promo code SNAPS. You want a great Bluetooth speaker for a gift for this Christmas. Huge thank you to Ryan Brumley, Paul Farrington, Pat Gunter, Danny Cardenas, all these SNAPS. Uh, behind the scenes teams. 
Thank you to the Volume Sports Network. Thank you to Papa Khan. But most importantly, thank you to y'all. Um, everybody watching, listening, wherever you're at. Like we said at the beginning of the show, we love you. This is our favorite thing to do. Please help spread the word. Oh, okay, real quick on Andor. Uh, it remains some of, you know, a top three Star Don't Wars thing it. ever made. Don't I'm not, no spoiler. No, no, spoiler free. Spoiler okay. free. I would never do spoilers. I would never do spoilers. Okay. Um, it remains a top three Star Wars thing ever. It, it's just an objectively great television show. Like, take Star Wars off of it. It would be my favorite show of the year. Every week blows me away. Um, and it's weird because the viewership numbers are not that high. So I would say if you've been on the fence or maybe like Aaron, you tried out, you didn't know you thought at first, keep going. It is, it's just spectacular, y'all. I cannot wait. I'm already, and this is such a good feeling. I'm already counting down the hours until the season finale next Wednesday. And, and that's always a great place to be. So shout out, um, shout out Andor. It's awesome. All right, Aaron, we are going to let you go. You got to do a show. And uh, again, thank you to all the listeners. We love you. Rate it, review it, spread the word of snaps. And we'll see you on Saturday every little snaps after dark. Mwah. Boom.